Hi, this is your host, Andrew Rafael, the founder and CEO of Baintree Wealth Advisors. And I want to welcome you to the Your Wealth and Beyond podcast, a show that was created to help you simplify the financial world and to ensure that you're living your best life now and in retirement. Each show, we're going to be bringing on experts that are going to help you build wealth and most importantly, find purpose in what matters most. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. And today's show is going to center around what we call here at Baintree, the retirement red zone. See, the retirement red zone is a critical point for those getting closer to retirement. Think of it as extending five years prior to what your quote-unquote retirement date is, and then the subsequent five years right after. And as we're entering into the heart of this football season here in 2020. And I know it's not a normal football season, but look, the NFL is a third of the way in. You know, my Cleveland Browns have won more games this year than they have in previous full years. So we're really excited about that. College is starting to figure it out and Big Ten is going to be starting soon. So retirement red zone and the analogy with how important and critical is, just like when a team is driving into that red zone, which is from the 20 yard line to the end zone, It's a critical point to not make any errors. And the same thing can be said, this phase is so critical to ensure that you have peace of mind in a stable retirement so you can enjoy what we call, quote unquote, our golden years. You know, no matter how much you've worked over the years to save and accumulate and put money away and live well within your means, if you get this last phase wrong, If you don't have a game plan on this distribution side, you could see things blow up on you. And that's the last thing you want to do as you've worked 40 years to get to this point. And you may well have 30 or 40 years in retirement. So here are some of the things that we're going to talk through on today are the mistakes, these risks that are out there. We're going to help you make sure that you do not make them. You know, and we know really from most of, of, of the listeners and most of our clients and just the world today, pensions have pretty much disappeared, leaving your investments and social security as the two means to help sustain you through retirement. You know, years ago, we would have pensions and social security that could make up almost 80% of your income need. But as the advent of the 401k took effect in the late 70s, early 80s, the risk went from being on the company that you work for, the employer, they shifted it to you. And now we throw in the fact that we're living longer. Longevity risk is first and foremost on a lot of our clients' minds, meaning we're going to live longer. Is my money going to be there for me? And it's not just outliving my money. We talk about outliving our lifestyle. So critical piece there. The other other piece is healthcare costs. We don't know where costs will be in the next five years or 15 years or 30 years, but I think just like most people indicate that taxes are going up, and we firmly believe that, we also believe it, that healthcare costs are going to continue to rise faster than inflation, which could eat up a big piece of your retirement portfolio. So this is where we've got to have a long-term plan in place. It's important that your assets work for you during this retirement red zone. So let's talk about some of the risks that are out there that are having a plan can help you mitigate. Risk number one, it is common for people to retire and go straight from accumulation, meaning saving, to the distribution without making proper changes to their portfolio mix to provide this safer income stream. It's a mistake to continue to invest with too much risk when you're approaching or entering retirement. You know, think in terms of we had the bull run in the 90s, then we had the tech bust, then we had a good run until the great depression type of financial disaster in 07, 08, 09. And over the last 10 years, it's been a fairly good run for most who've taken risk in their investing strategies. But the key is so many times we get stuck in this, well, I'm 70% invested in equities and 30% bonds, and that's okay when you're working. But the challenge that we face 
in retirement, especially when you start to need those funds, if you retire at the wrong time, meaning the beginning of a bear market, then this could cause major, major disruption to your overall investable plan. And we have studies after studies saying and showing that if you take the same amount of money from two portfolios, one that enters into this distribution phase during a down market for a few years, and one that has a positive return for the first few years, even if at the end of the day, they end up 15 years later with the same annualized return, the fact that when you're pulling money out and you're taking these big losses means that your money is going to run a lot faster. So the key here is market risk is a huge risk that you face. So as you get closer to retirement, it's having a structured plan to know how much risk you're taking, how much risk you need to take, and designing the plan to ensure that you have the risk assets in a bucket that maybe you don't touch for quite a few years. So market risk is a very important risk, especially as we get into right now, this volatile period. I'm not saying it's just from the election. It's just a lot of factors in play with regards to where this economy is going. So that's number one. Risk number two, many people overlook the fact that they will go from not spending every dollar that comes in each month during the working years to spending every dollar that you earn from social security and now needing to pull out from your savings and not really truly understanding what your income need is. So expenses, understanding your budget. And when I talk about expenses, it's your fixed costs and then it's your discretionary costs. Now, I know right now with COVID, many of you are spending a lot, a lot less than you normally have. But we know at some point, we're going to get back to the normal. You're going to be able to do those trips. You're going to be able to see your family. You may even buy that second home. So we've got to understand, and it's not the day you retire, it's leading up to that, understanding what those fixed costs are, making sure they're in line, and then making sure you have enough money coming in to meet those expense needs. So this is something that most of us were, were working our entire lives, and we're getting this paycheck, and we can budget that way. But then ultimately, we retire and beyond Social Security, which many of our clients delay Social Security, which can be a great, great long-term approach to ensuring that your money works better for you because you've got this guaranteed income that has a cost of living adjustment, Social Security does. But ultimately, just truly understanding where the money's coming from. So what we help our clients understand is the value of getting monthly paychecks from their retirement accounts and their after-tax accounts. And just knowing instead of having to pull out, I've got all this money in one bucket and I can pull it out whenever I want, that's great, but it's hard for you to budget and it's psychologically more difficult. So risk number two is not really knowing how much you need in retirement, not having a true handle on your expenses and not knowing where that money's coming from. Risk number three, healthcare, right? During your working years, Healthcare is not typically an ongoing concern for each of us. And at least part of healthcare expenses are covered by the employer. So normally we're working for companies. We've got a great plan. Some companies pay for 50% of it. Some companies, you're fortunate out there, we see it a lot that they're paying for all of your healthcare expenses and also your spouse. And if you have younger kids, so everybody's on that plan. Well, in retirement, we know that healthcare expenses are going to eat up a lot of your expense each and every year. And we need to consider planning on the health side is just as important on the investment side, especially, especially for those of you that are going to retire before 65. Now, I know many of you are sticking it out to get to 65 because that's when Medicare pops and you jump on Medicare and you've got a sound plan. Now, Medicare planning itself, there's a lot of different variations from the Advantage plan to the supplemental plan. So that's something that you got to get a good gauge on why we added Medicare as part of within our company because we were getting so many questions on it. But if you retire before 65, 
a risk is not understanding what it's going to look like out there you know, whether Cobra makes the most sense and how much Cobra will be. Well, it's going to be expensive because the employer is not going to cover any of that. And how long will your Cobra last? And then if we can't jump onto Cobra or we're on Cobra and then it ends and now we're not 65, what is out there? And I know the landscape is going to change and it changes almost every year. And depending upon who's in power, the political side, this is a big area of concern because of the ambiguity. So what we look at as part of our planning and part of your planning should be healthcare planning. That's a big risk if you don't plan correctly. So it's not just the health insurance, but it's also long-term care, assisted living, home healthcare, all of these factors. What are some of the ways in which you can save and insure that you're going to have the proper care. There's a lot of different ways out there. Each and every one of us, it's maybe a little bit different of what we do need. So it's not a one size fits all. So healthcare planning, if it's not part of your plan, pre-retirement, and if it's not part of your plan ongoing in retirement, it needs to be. Risk number four, the first few years of retirement are a lot of the times the most expensive. I don't know countless times over the hundreds of clients that we work with is these are the years they're healthiest. These are the years they want to do those trips. They want to go on the safari in Africa. They want to do the European cruise. Again, let's talk about post-COVID back to some normalcy there. So, you know, the studies say retirees spend on average around 80% of their working annual salary. Now, again, that number, when we try to quantify it, we really have to look at what we try to have our clients look at. Okay, let's say you're making 125000 before you retire. Well, it's not really 80% of that number because you're going to be paying on that 125000 a lot more in taxes than you are in retirement because you're not going to have FICA in retirement no matter where your income's coming from. But number two, many of you, besides withholding for taxes, you're funding 401k plans, you're funding IRAs, you're funding SEPs, you're funding Roth accounts. So at the end of the day, what you need to think about is while you're working and living the lifestyle that you've been accustomed to is what is your net take home each month? Meaning what goes into your bank account? And with that, are you able to cover your costs? Are you able to cover your expenses? And are you saving even a little bit more on top of that? That's an important component because We look at income, we subtract out pensions and social security, and this is the amount that we're going to need from our investments. You know, the old adage has been this 4% rule. It indicates how much you should withdraw from your investments each year. You know, we look at things a little bit differently. And if we can structure things where we optimize social security, if you're fortunate, of course, to have a pension to make sure that you use it the right way so that protecting you and your spouse, if you are married or your partner. And then ultimately, what if we had another stream of guaranteed income, not for growth, but having some of your retirement money giving you a paycheck every month, no matter what. It's this guaranteed income for a lot of our clients. Their expenses in retirement, even in those first few years, a high majority of it is covered from guaranteed income. So what this does is it gives us peace of mind. It means that we can weather some of these storms that are brewing, potentially a bear market, potentially spending more money in the beginning years. So there's so many pieces of this retirement red zone, just like when you look at, you know, teams that are better than others. Why is Tom Brady and when he was with the Patriots and now with the Buccaneers, why are they so efficient in the red zone? It's because they always have a plan. They put in the work. It doesn't happen overnight. And They put in the work to ensure that they know all of the what ifs. What if the defense does this? What if the wind or the rain? What if that's happening? All these what ifs. And the same thing with your planning. We have to look at, okay, here are your goals. Here are your dreams. And then let's uncover all the worst case scenarios and build out a plan that is going to safeguard against all these eventual or potential issues that could come at you. And in fact, take your retirement off track from where it should be. And so where we want to be on the retirement red zone is we want to be efficient. We want to have a plan. We want to stay the course. And so that is why the retirement red zone, the first five years, 
after retirement, but more importantly, the five years prior, you got to be having these conversations. That's what we're here to do. If you as a listener have not been planning for the retirement red zone with your current team, you can reach out to us right below the show notes. Just click that button, you can have a 15 minute call with our team, clients that are listening to this. If you have questions on your retirement plan, just let us know and we'll make sure that it's on track, not just here as we end 2020, but as we move into 2021. So hope everyone out there stays safe. Enjoy the fall. Hopefully the football season continues on and uh, everybody happy planning. We'll be back real soon with a brand new episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. To get access to all the resources mentioned during today's podcast, please visit Baintree.com forward slash podcast. And be sure to tune in later this month for another episode of Your Wealth and Beyond. Investment advice is offered through Baintree Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuity products are offered separately through Baintree Planning Group, LLC. Baintree is not permitted to offer and no statement made during the show shall constitute legal or tax advice. You should talk to a qualified professional before making any decisions about your personal situation.